Here's one thing you didn't know about every mainline Mario game. We've got 24 total games to cover, and I want you to keep track of how many you actually knew, and drop a comment letting me know how you did. Let's do it. Super Mario Brothers, Aggressive Hammer Bros. If you ask anybody what the most infuriating enemy in this game is, they'll most likely respond with Hammer Bro. They're the sole reason 8-3 is the hardest level in the game, and anytime you run into one, you can almost guarantee you're losing your power up. Their hammer throws and jumps are timed perfectly to screw you over, but if you wait too long to make your move, they'll actually charge after you for the kill. Now, it takes around 45 seconds for them to actually make a move, which is why most people don't know about this, but now I'm gonna overthink the f*** out of every encounter with these things, knowing they're just waiting to pounce. Super Mario Bros. 2, or The Lost Levels. Flagpole Secret. If you've ever played this game, you'll know it is tough, and game overs are devastating. Or at least, they were. Well, besides that, 1-ups are very hard to come by in this game, with its cruel sense of humor. But if your coin total is a multiple of 11, and you hit the flagpole with the same last digit on your timer, you can get an extra life at the end of every level, which makes this game a lot easier. And you get fireworks every time. Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. Not a Mario game. This game is actually just a reskin of the Japanese game Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic, which, I'm kidding, that doesn't count. Let's focus instead on the main antagonist, War. He came out of nowhere in this game, and was never seen in the Mario series again, but he did make an appearance in Link's Awakening of all games. I mean, both are centered around sleeping, so there's that. He goes by Memu in that game, which is also Wart's Japanese name, but it's also a syllable flip for the word Muma, which means nightmare. They definitely thought that one through. Super Mario Land. Bombshell Koopas. Just like Wart, these enemies were created for and died with this game but these dudes have actually never been seen again. The developers couldn't figure out how to get the shells to ricochet off walls and pipes, so they instead completely replaced the iconic Koopa Troopa with these bad boys. Even though the back of the box still calls them Koopa Troopas. Come on guys, really? Super Mario Bros. 3, White Mushroom Houses. I've been playing this game since I was three years old, and I somehow never knew about these. Basically, one level in each world, one through seven, has a coin requirement that, once hit, causes a white mushroom house to spawn on the map. And inside is either a P-Wing or an Anchor, which which are exclusive to these. You know how the airship levels ran to other parts of the map when you died? Well, if you use one of these, they can no longer flee, which can come in mega clutch. And here's a bonus one for you. The end panel minigame where you flip over the cards always has a mushroom, flower, then star in the bottom right corner. You're welcome. Super Mario World, the animated series. Yeah, if the Mario Super Show wasn't weird enough, it got a sequel show in The Adventures of Mario Bros. 3, then a sequel to that based on Mario World. It takes place in a prehistoric world, the main crew now adds Yoshi and this bratty cave kid, and there's musical numbers in every episode. If you're curious about it, I reviewed the entire series in a separate video that you can watch via that card. But spoiler alert, I don't recommend you watch the series for yourself. It's pretty rancid. Super Mario Land 2, Nintendo Before Mario. It's common knowledge by now that Nintendo didn't start off as a video game company. They were founded all the way back in 1889, where they produced Hanafuda playing cards, then later a slew of different toys, before finally making their way into the gaming industry. What the f*** does that have to do with Mario Land 2? Well, in the Mario Zone stage, the ground appears to be built out of a bunch of Legos, but they're actually N&B blocks. In 1968, Nintendo tried competing with Lego by producing their very own building blocks, but they were soon discontinued in the early 70s. So this is a neat reference to a rather obscure part of Nintendo's history. Super Mario 64, not actually 64 bits. This one's tough, okay? Most secrets in this game are anything but. L is real 2401, the boo laugh being a sped up Bowser laugh, or the TikTok clock hands determining the speed everything moves in the level. It's first grade, SpongeBob. I'm going with this one though, because if there's even one person out there who doesn't know, I want to bring Nintendo's sins to light. The Nintendo 64 obviously has 64 bits of processing power, but Mario 64 only uses 32, despite the namesake. This is mostly because the game's really big and storage on these cartridges wasn't exactly ideal. Also, it helped it run smoother. Super Mario Sunshine, Serena Beach Easter Eggs. Isle Delfino means Dolphin Island, based on the GameCube's codename, and the island's even shaped like a dolphin! A slightly better hidden reference is in Serena Beach. The outside patio of the hotel is actually a pretty subtle nod to the GameCube controller. You could never tell by just walking around, but taking a look from above, yeah, I would play Smash with that. Also, the goop in episode 6 is supposed to be shaped like a boot. Super Mario 64 DS, Luigi title screen. Normally, the title screen in this game cycles between a drawing of Mario and a drawing of Yoshi, but alternate between them three times and a hidden Luigi drawing will pop up. 
New Super Mario Bros. Challenge Mode. If you pause the game in the world map and press LRLRXXYY, you'll activate Challenge Mode, which no longer lets the screen scroll backwards. In most cases, it's not that challenging, but it does make it feel way more like the classic Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Galaxy, a scrapped Zelda fight. One of the most memorable boss fights in this game was against Mega Leg, but Nintendo actually wanted to incorporate this concept all the way back in Zelda Ocarina of Time. The final fight with Ganon was going to have him as a giant enemy that was both the boss and the arena. But we're talking about the N64 here. It clearly wasn't powerful enough to make that happen. So they held out until Mario Galaxy, and boy did it pay off. Talk about being ahead of their time. Imagine something like this coming out back in 1998. New Super Mario Bros. Wii, right under our noses. I've 100%ed this game and played through each level dozens of times, but even I hadn't found this hidden area. In level 1-3, there's a bunch of pipes that are half sticking out of the ground, and if you run into one with a mini mushroom, you can actually go through it. And right after the checkpoint, there's a hidden pipe in one of these that leads you to a very well-hidden sub-area, with a bunch of coins and some Koopas. Not a huge reward for what is a very difficult room to find, but it's still a pretty creative secret. Super Mario Galaxy 2, Womp King Expressions. In the throwback galaxy, after you scale Womp's fortress and defeat the king, his facial expression actually changes to one of sheer disbelief that he lost. Yeah, since you attack his back, you can't actually see it, but it was fully programmed in the game. Super Mario 3D Land. Disturbing imagery. Mario games are usually the furthest thing from scary. I didn't say Luigi games, I said Mario. They're bright and colorful, the music is upbeat, and then 4-4 puts a creepy ass face behind the flagpole if you wait around for too long. That's not a boo or a peepa, that's a human looking ghost. I never found this one as a kid, and I'm glad I didn't, because this shit is nightmare fuel. New Super Mario Bros. 2, Rainbow Courses. On a slightly happier note, this one pays homage to the classic side-scrolling Mario games with another really cool timer-based secret. If you touch the flagpole at the exact moment the last two digits on the timer match that of the world you're in, you'll not only get a fireworks show that ends with a rainbow sprouting, but upon returning to the world map, a special rainbow level will appear. These are enemy-free and loaded with coins, which is fitting for this game. New Super Mario Bros. U, bonus items. Okay guys, it was a clever callback in the last game, but this one just feels lazy. If you beat any level and the last two numbers on the timer are the same, excluding zero, you'll run past the goal and total be there to give you a free item. What you get depends on the numbers you end with, so if you need something specific, take a screenshot. Super Mario 3D World, win every slot. There's a bunch of these slot machines sprinkled around the world map, and it may seem like dumb luck to get all four items to line up, but there is a reliable system to win every time. If you hit the boxes to the beat of the music, you're guaranteed to line up all four and get eight easy one-ups. And if you already knew that, here's another pretty cool one. When you're running while holding a Koopa shell and press crouch, you'll actually go up inside of it and roll around like the blue shell power-up in Mario Bros. DS. And if you knew both of those, good job, give yourself a point. Super Mario Maker, Fly Swatter Game. You remember that mini game way back in Mario Paint where you tried to kill all the flies? You don't? Anyways, they brought it back for Mario Maker. All you gotta do is shake around a muncher until it spawns three flies, then smack him with the stylus, which automatically starts the minigame. From there, it's basically the same as the original, but with a way better control scheme. That mouse can't do sh**. Super Mario Run, Remix 10 reference. Okay, I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. This one's not all that hidden, but Mario Run's barely a mainline game, so shh, it's fine. Remix 10 is a bonus mode that plays a bunch of really nicely remixed songs from older Mario games. Seriously, these are top tier. But the name is actually ripped straight from Rhythm Heaven, more specifically, the Wii version's most challenging level. Super Mario Odyssey, pause menu hidden jingles. When you pause and press continue right after, the two sound effects combine to sound an awful lot like the iconic one-up jingle. But it gets better. If you pause, go to options, choose mode, then back out, the sounds compiled to play the first 10 notes of the Comet Observatory theme. I freaking love that. Super Mario Maker 2, Safe Lava. A really cool trick to make levels seem impossible is by incorporating some walkable lava. To set it up, place a bullet bill blaster on a sloped surface and make sure the top lines up with the lava. Then when you hit play, it settles to the slope and becomes completely invisible, but still a safe platform to- I forgot to put one there. Bowser's Fury, only one non-feline. If you've played Bowser's Fury, you'll know the entire thing is cat-themed, and literally every living creature that inhabits the world at the very least has cat ears. The only animal that doesn't are the crabs, and I don't know if that was an accident or if they really just did not want to f*** with crabs. The birds? Of course! The bees? Ah, sure. The architecture? Hell yeah! The bullies? It'd be dumb not to! How about the crabs? F*** 
no, ew! Super Mario Brothers Wonder, jump on water. This is less of an Easter egg and more of a useful trick, but if you run, crouch jump onto some water, and press jump again as you hit the surface, you bounce right back up without any slowdown. And that's 24 things you didn't know about each mainline Mario game. Tell me your score down in the comments, and please, if I miss one of your favorites, let me know. If you want to learn more about that Mario World cartoon I mentioned, check out the video on screen, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later.